You are Locked On Kentucky, your daily podcast on the Kentucky Wildcats, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, what's going on, Big Blue Nation? Welcome on in to Locked On Kentucky, your daily Kentucky Wildcats podcast. I'm your host, Lance Dahl, writer for Sports Illustrated for various SEC-related things. But on this podcast specifically, we take a dive into all things Kentucky athletics. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Bet BetOnline has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. That is Bet Online, where the game starts. On today's episode of Locked On Kentucky, we are going to be previewing Kentucky basketball's matchup with the Louisville Cardinals. We're going to ask the question, is there even a win to be had here considering what's been going on with the program? And then finally, going to give some final thoughts on the Music City Bowl. Could be one of the worst bowl matchups of all time. Could be one of the best, depending on how you look at it. Thank you so much for making Locked On Kentucky your first listen every single day. I want to remind everybody out there that we are free and available on all platforms. And if you would please subscribe if you're watching on YouTube, it would mean a ton. And I mean a ton to the YouTube channel. We're getting closer and closer to 3,000 subs. Let's see if we can get there before the end of January is actually, honestly, when I would like to accomplish that. All right, Kentucky versus Louisville. Time to get back into the negative. If you've been listening to this show, if you've been watching Kentucky basketball, not a whole lot of positive things have been going on around the Wildcats recently, most notably John Calipari's failures as the head coach and uh, you know some of the issues that they've been dealing with surrounding that, I guess you could say. Uh, a lot of frustration brewing within the fan base. It has been for quite some time. You may want to say it's been happening since that St. Peter's loss earlier in the year, but it's been happening for longer than that. Since the end of that 19, 9-16 season in 2020, honestly, during the beginning of that year, I think a lot of people had some questions and some concerns about Cal and what was to come. And here we are now, 8-4, and four, with an opportunity to beat the brakes off one of the worst teams in the Power Six. That would be the Louisville Cardinals. I want to go ahead and say something here up front. Louisville stinks in every way possible. They are not a good basketball team. They suck at everything. That 2-11 and 11 record, there's a reason these guys uh, have been losing quite a bit. It's not necessarily because, oh, they're locked in in all these close games and they just quite can't get there. No, they just suck. And there's no other way to put it. So there's going to be a question here later on in the show. Is, is there even a victory to be had here for the Wildcats if they end up winning this game? Because I truly think that this fan base's response will be dependent on how much Kentucky wins this game by. Because I expect them to win this game, and I expect them to win it comfortably. But if they don't, then there are a lot of things that we need to be discussing immediately following that game. If you want to kind of get a look into what the Cardinals do statistically, L. Ellis is their leading score at 17 points per game. Next closest score is Brandon Huntley-Hatfield at 8.1 points per game. If you can tell me where Huntley-Hatfield played before he transferred to Louisville, I will give you a cookie. You've got five seconds. Tennessee. This man left Tennessee to go play for one of the worst teams in all of college basketball. Shout out Brandon Huntley-Hatfield, who is averaging eight, six, and half an assist per contest. So it's L. Ellis. It's Huntley Hatfield. It's Jalen Withers. Those are the three leading scorers. None of them are efficient at all. In fact, you look at Louisville's overall percentages from the floor. They're shooting 40% from the floor, 31.9% from three. They're averaging 16.7 turnovers per game as opposed to 8.7 assists. They have almost doubled up, essentially doubled up their turnovers to assists per game. Just let that sink in for a second. Their leading scorer has 17. They average 61 a game, they can't shoot, they turn the ball over, they don't get blocks, they don't get steals. The weirdest part about about this is their average height is 10th nationally. And that's mostly because they have a bunch of power forwards on their roster, they've got like half a million of them. But man, this team's not good. As we all know, former Kentucky assistant, Kenny Payne, out here doing the work for the Cardinals. This is one of the worst offenses in the entire country. It's a little, it's slightly underneath average when it comes to their defensive statistics, but their offense, man, putrid. 23.8% of possessions result in a turnover. A quarter of their possessions right now result in a turnover. I think it's important, instead of looking at the matchups, when you face a team as bad as this, if you're Kentucky, you look at the numbers 
and you assess where you should be relative to that. Because if there has been a consistent theme of teams, regardless of whether or not they're good, dominating you, a team like Kentucky should be able to go out there on their home court and do similar things. Evaluate the numbers, see where they're at relative to everyone else, and take a look at what you can do. In this game, what do you expect? I expect everything going Kentucky's way. I expect them to turn Louisville over. I expect them to have really, really fun time, a uh, really, really good time in transition. I expect there to be a lot of fun had. I expect the players to be able to actually show some chemistry together in this game because Louisville's not great on defense either. I expect the offensive spacing and the flow to be good. And that's not because of Cal's doing, it's because of the fact that Louisville just sucks. I expect Kentucky to dominate in every single way in this game. There is nothing in this in this matchup that gives me any indication whatsoever that they should contend in this matchup. Absolutely nothing. Their two wins on the year, by the way, came in back-to-back games against Western Kentucky. They won 94 to 83, where everything just happened to be going in uh, against the Hilltoppers. And then right after that, common opponent. They beat Florida A and M sixty-one to fifty-five at home. It took them holding Florida A&M to 55 points to actually get the dub. Comparatively, Kentucky held Florida A&M to 68 points at home, but that was only because Kentucky decided that they did not want to play defense immediately following Cal's comments in the UCLA game. We just need more toughness. And they proceeded to go out and play about as weak as you possibly could on the defensive end. So Louisville's not good at anything. They don't have any good players. Even L. Ellis, the only reason he's averaging 17 a game is because he's taken half a million shots this year. He's taken 188 shots. The next closest player has 85. Excuse me, 87, my bad. So he's taken 101 more shots than the next closest player. That's why he's averaging 17 a night. They need him to get to actually score in order for them to have a chance. This is ugly, though. This is really, really ugly for Kenny Payne and the start to their year. Kentucky should be able to win this game, and they should win it comfortably. Although I said Louisville has half a million power forwards, and apparently Kentucky has none, shouldn't matter. It literally should not matter. And so I think the question we now have to ask ourselves here is we we kind of understand, okay, there's not even a whole lot of analysis to do on this team. They just are not good. It's, It's plain and simple. If you're losing to teams like Bellarmine, out the gate, Bellarmine, Bellarmine, don't know how to pronounce anything, Wright State, App State, Lipscomb, you don't deserve to be in any sort of statistical deep dive. There's no analysis to be had here, truly. They don't do anything well. So Kentucky should dominate. And I think the question we now have to ask is, is there a victory to be had? I want to kind of dive into that thought in just a second. Before we do that, though, if you're hanging out with some friends, And putting back a few drinks, a few could potentially come, become a little too many. And as the evening comes to an end and people start to head out, you think of calling for a ride, but nah, you live nearby, you can make it home okay, it's no big deal. But what are the odds that you'll get pulled over anyway? And even so, what's the worst that could happen? Your insurance goes up, or you lose your license, or your job, or you total your car, or you kill someone. Because see, everyone knows about the risks of driving drunk. The results are often tragic and often deadly. However, that still doesn't stop everyone from getting behind the wheel while under the influence. So that's why police officers are out there right now looking for impaired drivers on our roads to save lives. So if you think you're okay to drive after a few drinks, think again, play it safe, and plan ahead to get a ride because it only takes one mistake to change your life or someone else's forever. This is a reminder to drive sober or get pulled over, presented by the NHTSA. All right, continuing along here on the Friday edition of Locked On, Kentucky Lance Dahl hanging out here with you. The question, and I want you to answer this in the YouTube comments as well. If you're listening on podcast, by the way, really appreciate you. Is there a victory for John Calipari and the Kentucky Wildcats here? Because let, let, let's say, let's, let's look at both sides. Let's say they win. If you win... I genuinely believe there needs to be a certain margin of victory here. Now, I'm not going to sit here and put a specific point total on it. I'm not going to sit here and say this is the margin that you need to win by. It's 12 points. It's 15. It's 20. It's half a million. 
but it needs to be a fairly large win for two reasons. Number one, obviously the fan base and the team, more importantly, needs the confidence boost. They've got to have something, anything right now. They need, some, they need some momentum. They need some validation. You need to be able to get these kids going in the right direction because right now it is clear they are not. A little statistic here for you, a little fun fact. So Louisville stinks, right? And even against the good teams, they've been dominated. Against teams inside the top 160 on Kim Palm, Louisville is 1-7. in seven. They lost those games by an average of 23.3 points. So against teams in the essentially in the top half of the country, an above average team, they're losing by 23.3 points too. Again, the only victory was against Western Kentucky, where it was just a just a weird night for them. If Kentucky doesn't win this game by a comfortable margin, I think that the fan base will continue to kind of dive into like the, oh my goodness, the sky is falling mode. Which to be honest honest with you, I don't understand why they wouldn't at least be a little upset. I mean, we've talked about that quite a bit on, on recent shows. And then I think the third thing, as far as winning this game by a large margin, again, to go to tie this into the confidence and the mental side of this for the team, look at what you've got coming up. You've got LSU at home. You've got Alabama on the road, South Carolina at home, Tennessee on the road. You may say, oh, well, Lance, that, ten- that LSU team, you know, not really played a whole lot of teams. You know, the strength of schedule is pretty weak. But they are 12-1, and one, I would like to point out. And they just beat a top 10 team in Arkansas. Beat them 60-57 to 57 in the, uh, the season opener. Or SEC opener, excuse me. Sure, they may not be statistically dominant. But that's a team that can sneak up on Kentucky and beat them. Why? Because we've seen other teams do that this year. By the way, I just randomly want to point this out. So Michigan, last time we talked about them, they were 7-4. and four. They just now, uh, just a few hours ago, lost to Central Michigan 63-61 to 61 at home. They lost to Central Michigan. Shout out Tony Barbie, I guess. Goodness gracious. But yeah, so if Kentucky wins, they need to win it by a lot. For several reasons. And the question we need to ask, I guess, now, as we continue to the other side of this, I don't even want to talk about it. What happens if you lose? What happens if you lose this game? If you're Kentucky? First of all, let's think about the fan reaction. What will you guys do if Kentucky loses this game? What will I do if Kentucky loses this game? Against 2-11 and Louisville at home, rivalry game. I don't think that a resignation or a firing would be in order, but you would have to be blind to come out of the game and say anything other than the coaching has to change, whether it's the same person that's here on the court now or it's somebody else in the future. Forget the lifetime contract. This is a problem. This is something that needs to be addressed. Because let's say, theoretically, let's say Kentucky goes out there and they have every every single time down the floor, they have every single possible shot they could get. doesn't necessarily matter if it's open. They're just getting to their spots. They can't hit. Who is that on? Oh, you say it's on the players. Okay, cool. Who recruited the players? Who's coaching the players? Who's directing the players? Who's telling the players what to do? It's the coach. Sure, he can't go out there and shoot those free throws for them. Sure, he can't shoot that open three for them. But he's the one that brought them there to do it. So you have to blame somebody, and at the end of the day, it all comes back to the head man and his staff. More importantly, we talked about that on yesterday's ep- episode. If you lose this game, there are, there are fingers to be pointed, and they all come back to Calipari. There is no way that I will sit here and defend it if that happens. And I don't think that there's going to be a lot of people out there that defend him regardless if he loses. Just, it it would be the most unacceptable thing. We thought the St. Peter's game was unacceptable. This would be another new low. Eight and five out the gates with the National Player of the Year coming back on your roster. 
and a handful of five stars. Get out of here with that player. Non- it's the player's problem nonsense. Sure, they're not perfect. Sure, this is not the most talented team in the world. The coaching is weighing it down, in my opinion. All right. That's enough basketball talk for today. We're going to be obviously recapping this episode on Monday. Hopefully, we're recapping a massive win, which is what we expect. I mean, I expect the, I expect Kentucky to kind of get back on the tra- on the right track here before they play LSU. And you know what? To be honest with you, the way the schedule sets up, you get LSU at home, start to build some momentum heading into that Alabama game. Hey, Alabama's not perfect either. They were in a dogfight against Mississippi State. This league, we've talked about it. It's going to be grueling. The schedule's going to be grueling. So who knows? Who knows what could happen? I want to talk about some final thoughts on the Music City Bowl. There's some interesting notes that we've not gotten to to discuss on this show. Before we get to that, though, I want to tell you guys to just subscribe to the channel. Just want to remind you guys that I would really appreciate it if you subscribed on YouTube and if you're listening on podcast. Please do me a favor and leave a five-star review. I am out there looking for reviews to kind of give you guys shout-outs. And uh, I don't think there's been one recently. And if I missed one, I apologize. I'll go check. But I really appreciate the support y'all have given the channel. And I would ask you kindly that you would continue to support it. All right, wrapping up the Friday edition of Locked On Kentucky. Lance Dahl hanging out here with you. Final thoughts on the Music City Bowl. couple of notes here on the quarterback situation for both teams. Last time we spoke, these two teams were, uh, I believe, playing within a game that the over-under total was 31. If I'm not mistaken, I need to go pull that up right now just to make sure it's not gone lower. But as of right now, as it stands, we have found our two quarterbacks, ladies and gentlemen, for this matchup. Last time we spoke, we had a pretty good idea of who the two team or who the two signal callers were going to be. And we have found Iowa's quarterback. Ladies and gentlemen, we thought it was going to be either Carson May or Joey Labus. It is, in fact, Joey Labus. He is a former three-star quarterback. Got a nice build at six foot three. He's going to be calling the shots for the Iowa offense. According to him earlier in the week, he said that they have installed things that they have never run before, which is great. (laughs) <laughs> because because you know that means they're going to be able to implement it real good. <laughs> yeah, uh, Labus has also done the wonderful joke of labeling himself as a dual threat, which means in Iowa's offense, he can either throw an interception or take a sack. That's what Iowa dual threat quarterbacks do. On the Kentucky side of things, you've got Kaya Sharon or Destin Wade or Deuce Hogan, according to the Kentucky depth chart. Now, I would like to say that I, I think it's pretty... Pretty clear that Sharon's going to be able to start and finish this game unless he goes out there and throws three picks. In which case, you're probably going to see Wade, obviously. I think Sharon's going to rock in this one, though. I think he's going to be just fine. Don't think he's going to be great, but I think he's going to be okay. And then the final note I wanted to make here about the quarterback situation, and this is per Hunter Shelton of Wildcats today. Apparently, Iowa has an answer outside of Carson May in case Joey Labus gets hurt. Senior tight end Sam Laporta was seen taking reps at quarterback during Iowa's practice in Nashville on Tuesday. He later confirmed to reporters that if Labus and May were both unavailable to go, he would play the role of emergency QB on Saturday. I would love, more than anything, to see Sam Laporta, a tight end, taking snaps at quarterback for Iowa in a bowl game. It's a shame I'm not going up there to, going up there to watch it. But to be honest with you, don't really know if there's a whole lot of people that are going to want to see this in person unless they're sitting inside the 10-yard line because that is prime seating for some uh, some really interesting punts, I would like to think. So yeah, Music City Bowl, I went and checked just a second ago. The over-under is still set at 31, according to Bet Online. They also have the line at 2.5 in favor of Iowa, even though ESPN's FPI says that uh, Kentucky's going to win this game It's essentially a 50-50 split, though. It's 50.3% to 49.7. Two bad offenses. Two great defenses. A plethora of lost lost talent. Jeez, can't speak. And uh, a couple of third-string quarterbacks. Let's get it. If you got a final score prediction on this uh, Music City Bowl, you can leave it in the comments below. If you've got a a final score comment on uh, this Louisville game as well, You can leave it in the comments there, too. 
All right, that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked On Kentucky. You can follow the show on Twitter at Locked On UK. You can follow me on Twitter at Lance Stahl underscore, and you can follow the show over on Instagram. That is at Kentucky Podcast. Again, any questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the comments. Hit me on the socials. I will see you all on Monday for another episode of Locked On Kentucky. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and God bless. <laughs>